It's traditional in Montana to be self-reliant from homesteaders who had to know a lot of skills to stay alive to victory gardens during times of war to ration our resources. As a nation, we've been moving from self-reliance and self-sufficiency to relying on others. This is a picture of my great-grandparents in 1916 on their homestead, 10 miles south of the Canadian border and north of Haver. They immigrated from Norway and had six kids there. The skill set they had to have to make a living was incredible. What I want to do is encourage parents to take small steps towards teaching their kids to be more self-reliant. And when small steps are put together, they make larger steps as your child grows. Now, these small steps aren't realized at first. But when as parents, we do these activities with our kids and promote them into adulthood, we help them be more self-reliant. Growing a garden is still one of the best ways for an adult to be self-reliant. Getting your kids started is as easy as digging up a small plot in your yard, digging and planting something simple like rhubarb or strawberries. Raised beds are easy to build and then the sky's the limit. From there, zucchini can be made into just about anything, from relish to bread. Tomatoes and, and peppers can be grown in flower pots on your deck on a, and on the sunny side of your house. And from there, leave the watering and weeding to your kids. Growing up in my family, we always canned a few things. This is a picture of my daughter stuffing jars for pickled asparagus, one of my favorites. Some of these were large family affairs for me. Uh, some weird things can be canned. My mom used to can watermelon pickles. Why, I don't know. Just something new to try, I suppose. On the large side, uh, my family would can sauerkraut at a, on a grand scale. My grandfather would get a pallet of cabbage heads, take it to a local restaurant, grind it up, and then send it over to his house, where my grandmother and a gaggle of, of women would brine and pound the cabbage with stones in crocks that everybody had brought to her basement. Canning the foods from your own garden is one of the most rewarding things you can do. Making tomato sauce out of the peppers and the tomatoes that you grew on your deck is always rewarding. Jams and jellies made from the rhubarb and the strawberries that you grew in your yard always make, uh, are easily achieved and make great presents. Hunting and fishing have been going on for generations in Montana and are important family affairs for many. In Montana, we are blessed with so many opportunities to go fishing. Locally popular places to take kids are Frenchtown Pond and Nine Pipes Kids Pond. Now, hunting can come in various forms. Teaching your kids to shoot with either a gun or a bow and arrow is the first big step in this form of self-sufficiency. This is a picture of my daughter sighting in their rifles with my dad. In our own school, the National Archery in Schools program, taught by my lovely wife, is one way to get started in this form of self-sufficiency and leads to hours of enjoyment. From there, going to a 3D archery shoot and getting in a day's worth of practice is easily achieved and can be done all over this great state of ours, from Troy to Haver and Dillon to Shelby. Taking your kids camping is always a rewarding experience, not only for the, the memories made, but the skills that you can work on. Simply starting a fire is one of the best skills that you can work on. Letting your kids try and start a fire with a single match is a difficult task unless you really work at it. Finding the proper size kindling and the order in which to use it is difficult enough for an adult, let alone a child. Sewing is a hobby that can last a lifetime. The skills learned here help mend tears, sew on buttons, design quilts, and to the extreme, make wedding dresses. Here, my daughter's making an apron. These skills can enable our children some of these self-sufficiency skills can lead, towards, can lead towards employment opportunities as adults. Hunting and fishing guides to seamstresses, aquaculture to horticulture, all still viable occupations in Montana. Some of these skills can bring out the entrepreneurial spirit in your kids. My kids have a small business selling jam at local farmer's markets. Teach your kids these skills, and this will enable them to stay in this great state of ours and raise our grandchildren nearer to us. Probably, probably the most important aspect of all this 
teaching self-sufficiency is that it can be generational. This is a three-generation picture with my oldest daughter and her second dear. Getting grandparents involved brings forward the skills that they learned and brings generations closer together. It also increases the value and respect that our kids have for their grandchildren. Teach them skills that will last a lifetime, and they can pass it on to the next generation of great Montanans. Now, none of these skills are going to instantly make your kids self-sufficient, nor will it encourage them to move out anytime soon. <laughs> but some of these skills, when you put them together, like gardening and canning, or hunting and camping, build on one another and promote each other. Some of these can show the limits to which your kids are willing to be self-reliant. Neither of my daughters are inclined to field dress the deer that they shoot. But also, on the other hand, my daughter and I walked eight miles to get this deer back to hunting camp. Some of these activities can be very revealing in that my daughter told me this past hunting season, one of the first questions she would ask a potential husband is whether he knows how to field dress a deer. <laughs> now, this is not an all-inclusive list, just a few that my wife and I like to do with our kids as they get older. It brings us closer together as a family, especially when it gets closer to them moving out and it decreases the likelihood of them moving back home. Thank you. Thank you.